Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to briefly go over the J type instruction in MIPS assembly. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So, the J type instruction is used by the jump and the jump and link instructions. Okay, and the opcode for jump is 2, and the opcode for jump and link is 3. The format of the instructions has just two fields, right? So we've got six bits for the opcode as usual, right? So bits 26 through 31, and that leaves us with 26 bits for the rest of the address, okay? Now here's the thing, you know, when you have your jump instruction, you say jump to dog, for example, right? Well, a dog is, you know, just a label that is short for some 32-bit memory address, right? So, you know, maybe that 32-bit memory address is um, 00400128 uh, or something like that, okay? So, index. So, how do we get this 32-bit address right here if the J-type instruction has only got 26 bits, okay? Well, the way this works, or the reason that it can work, is because J-type instructions, they're pseudo-direct instructions, or they're pseudo-direct instructions. Uh, addressing type of addressing okay so the way that 32-bit instruction gets constructed right is that the lower two bits which are not encoded in this 20 26 bit field are just automatically set to zero okay right off the bat so why well because remember uh, every instruction in MIPS is a word long, which means that all the instructions are aligned by word, which means that every instruction begins with a multiple of four. Okay, and so you're not going to have um, any odd number instruction address. Okay, um, they all start with multiples of four. So there's no reason to, to encode a two or a one here. Okay, so remember, zero, zero is the same thing as multiplying times four. This is the same result as doing a shift left times two or, or two places um, operation. Okay, so there's two of your six missing bits, right? So remember, we can only encode 26 bits because six of the bits were used up by the opcode. So two of our bits are just gonna automatically be zeros. The leading four bits, the most significant bits, 31 um, down to 27, that's coming from the program counter. Okay, the program counter. So the most significant bits of the program counter. So whatever the program counter instruction number is right now, you're grabbing the first four bits, the most significant bits, and you're plugging them in right here okay and so that's we've got those six bits accounted for now and the rest of these uh, 26 bits make up the instruction fill out your memory address for where you're jumping to okay uh, so I think that's everything that I need to talk about with the J type instruction um, you know, I should I should also maybe note that, you know, what let me give you an example here um, before I forget. You know, if this is our address space, okay, you're jumping relative basically to your current position using this program counter, right? So let's say that our jump instruction is here, okay? You're able to build um, memory addresses a certain distance in either direction, right? And that 
that certain distance is limited by these four bits right here, right? So remember in hex, four bits, one digit, okay? So your range and how far you can actually jump is controlled by that first digit. All right, um, anything else I need to mention to you? I don't think so. I mean, the, the, the advantage of the J-type format is that you do have um, 26 bits in here, right? I mean, this is better than other formats, um, you know, I-type, for example, because you know, if you have um, a load word instruction, for example, which is an I-type instruction, you know, then you've got something that looks maybe like this, right? The, the, uh, the uh, limit that you have for how far you can go, right? You can grab the memory address out of this register, but then you're limited to the size of this immediate as to how far you can jump either forward or backwards relative the address in S0, right? Remember, for I-type instructions, um, the immediate is limited to 16 bits, right? So we can actually jump a lot farther with J-type instructions uh, than we could with uh, I-type instructions, okay? And, you know, think about R-type instructions even, right? What do you, what, what do you have to work with there? Well, remember that guy has got your six bits for your opcode, and it's got um, it's got five bits for source, target, and destination registers. Then it's got five bits for a shift amount, and then six bits for a function code. Right. So, if we were to use R type instructions for memory addressing, we'd be even more limited because the most bits you could use would be six, which is a lot less than the 16 bits of the I-type. So the J-type instruction gives you the ability to jump forwards and backwards a lot farther than you could with any other uh, instruction. Okay, so let's see if we can solidify our understanding uh, with a quick example, right? So let's say that I've got um, a jump instruction whose memory address is um, 0040024, right? Let's see here, would that be, yeah, that'd be, that'd be valid in base 16, okay? And let's say that where we're gonna jump to is gonna be, um, Zero zero four zero zero one twenty eight in base sixteen, right? And that corresponds. That's the that's the memory address that corresponds to that label, right? That label of one. So this memory address right here has to get constructed, so that way this jump can successfully happen, right? Now, how is that thing going to be? Constructed when a J-type instruction has got six bits for the opcode and only 26 bits for the address. Okay, well this is how it's going to work. Now the opcode for jump is two. Okay, so the rest of this is going to be made up of um, parts of our target address, okay? Right, but we have to build this target address in three pieces, okay? So what are those three pieces? Well, we need the 26 bits that are gonna go into the J type instruction itself. Then we need four bits, four significant bits, which brings us up to 30. And then we'll need two least significant bits, which will bring us to 32. Now, because words, or excuse me, because instructions are lined by words, that is to say you have a new instruction every four bytes, we 
can automatically um, initialize or set these bot these least significant bits to uh, zero um, because setting them to zero is similar to doing a shift left by two places. Shift left by two places is the same as multiplying by four. Okay. So what about these uh, leading four bits? Well, those leading four bits are coming from the program counter, right? We're going to take the most significant bits from the program counter register and plug them in right here. So if you take a look at where we're jumping from, that's this this address was in the um, program register, or excuse me, in the uh, program counter register when we jumped. Okay, um, I mean, technically it gets. Yeah, it's when we jumped, when we jumped. Okay, so we can take, we're going to take these four bits right here. And remember in hex, each one of these digits represents four bits. So that's going to fill out our most significant bits. And so now all we're left with is 2 through 26. Okay, so let's take a look at the target address. Okay, well. That's these four bits here. Our next four bits are all going to be zero. Takes care of that right there. Our next four bits are going to be four. Right? Takes care of that. Our next four bits are four. Takes care of that. Our next four bits are four. Takes care of that. And then um, our next four bits are one. Okay, I'm running out of room. Takes care of that. Uh, and then our next four bits are two. Right. And then our last four bits are eight. And part of those four bits are made up by these two least significant bits right here. So we're gonna have one, zero, and then these last two zeros here. Okay, so does that make up 32 bits? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So that makes up our final target memory address um, of 0040012. So that's what the actual, okay, so that's what, or that's how we would actually build it. So what goes in that field to finish off the J-type instruction? Not, not these first four, they don't get included. Not these last two, they don't get included. So it's these bits, the remaining bits, that fill out the second field. So zero, 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 one, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. Hopefully I don't lose my place here, crap. Uh, zero, 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 zero. Zero, 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 one. Zero, zero, one, zero. One, zero. Okay, so that should be 26 bits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. 26 bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, so here's your actual instruction in binary. And here's your computed address in binary. Um, and here's what that computed target address is in hexadecimal. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and if you thought that the video sucked well then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well if you'd like to see more videos if you're interested in more content from the channel feel free to hit that subscribe button and as usual if you're a student of mine and you have further questions feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours okay thanks for watching and we'll see you next time